Welcome, and thank you for watching today. We hope this message brings you hope and encouragement. We also love to be encouraged by hearing from you. If God has done something in your life and you would like to share it, please email us at saw at rttnchurch.com. That's S-A-W at rttnchurch.com. What is SAW? Here at RTTM, we believe in signs and wonders. God is always making himself known through his power, and one of the best ways is through your testimony. We also wanna let you know that you can be a part of the RTTN Church family and what God is doing here in Chattanooga through giving. You can give through our mobile app or through our website. Just visit rttm.church slash give. Thanks again for joining us at Redemption. Let's get into the message. seat. He's been standing for an hour and a half. I feel like his little legs are going to fall apart. I'm going to do something risky, but I feel like God's saying do it. Just hold your tithe and offering to the end. We're going to bring it to God. I, it's a little bit different flow the last couple of weeks, and I hope you're getting used to that. Thank you, Spirit. I have something today in my heart. I thought I was going in a direction with the message today. And while the text that I was studying was germane, the direction God took me in the text is very different where I anticipated going. And I, I've had a revelation. I got away this past week. Got to spend some time away from a cell phone and a computer. That's a good thing. Amen. Somebody said, I tried to call you. I know. I didn't have no signal. It was a wonderful thing. And I was sitting out on this porch looking at 14,000 foot high mountains. And I was looking at thousands and thousands of, of uninhabited acres. I was talking to God and the, the thing I feel like God has been dealing with me in my heart about for this house is a, a, an, an issue of culture. It's an issue of culture. What kind of culture will our church have? Now, you can have a vision statement, preacher. You can have a mission statement. But culture is really who your church is, no matter what you have written down. You know, there are a lot of people that have things written down on paper, but they're not manifesting in the house. Are you following me? I don't just want to say we want to be the most loving church in the world. I really want us to chase that. Amen. How many like the new walls when you came in? Did you see the walls painted? Didn't that look amazing? One of the things the Lord laid on my heart several months ago, he said, and this is something what I'm talking to you about is not a sermon today. I'm going to get to the text in a minute, but let me share th some things with my heart. I, I told Chad Madden, our director of media, and Zeke, our sort of our... Uh, creative, weird brain guy, <laughs> wherever he is, <laughs> uh, I said, I want the walls of our church to tell our story. I, I want the, the walls of our buildings to tell the story of who we are, what we believe. I, I want to, to set the culture. You have to be intentional about the culture you set. Culture does not happen accidentally. Amen? Culture happens because you intentionally provide information, revelation, and, and the knowledge necessary for people to grab something and then begin to demonstrate and manifest that culture. You can't say, I want to have a worshiping church and the pastor not be a worshiper. 
You can't say we want to have a house of freedom and everybody come in looking like you're bound. You can't say you want to be a place of healing and never pray prayers of faith for people to be healed. Culture is intentional. Every church has one. Whether they didn't talk about it or not, they are demonstrating a particular culture. And I have been not wrestling, I have been processing the kind of culture I feel like, because you understand that while we all have to buy into the cultures, we, we have to have a, a voice that declares, this is what the Lord is saying about this house. That's my responsibility as your pastor is to capture the heart of God. Devin and I trying to capture the heart of God, leadership trying to capture the heart of God, and then come back and say to the people, this is what heaven desires for us to be. If we don't do this, then we just come to church. And if you're not careful, you will come to church and replicate other places of worship you've been to, not knowing that that isn't fitting in this house. I made some people mad right there. Passivity is not acceptable in this house. Worshipless attendance is not what we're aiming for. You say, Pastor, are you telling me if I don't lift my hands and shout and run and do everything everybody else does that I can't come to church? That's not what I said. I'm just letting you know that disconnected, aloof attendance is not what we're shooting for. I could care less about crowds. I want the glory. Anybody want the glory? And we've learned some things as we've walked along establishing this culture of worship and freedom. We've learned everybody can't go there, and that's fine. They're not less spiritual. They're not, they're not not on their way to heaven. They're going to heaven. It's just a different culture. But we put our flag in the, in the field of contending for the glory of God. That means sometimes... Things happen that we've never seen happen before in church. I don't even know if we should live stream this. This is like a talk with the family. But I was sitting on that back porch this week. It occurred to me. Whatever we've seen from God and by God and of God. It's just minuscule to what is available. There's so much more. And I never want us to operate out of a posture of we've arrived. I want us to stay humble and hungry for more of him. And one of the areas that I really felt God, like God is trying to help us to sharpen in our culture is this thing of worship. Go to Psalm chapter 40. Let me get a text so some of you religious people don't get mad. <clears throat> I'm, 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 I love the word of God. And I'm grateful today that what I have to say didn't get made up in my mind. It comes straight out the Bible. Because you can never be more spiritual than you are scriptural. I'm going to take three verses out of Psalm chapter 40. And then I'm just going to talk today and I'm going to share my heart about the culture of this house. And I, I want to talk about the song of the king and the sound of the Lord. The song of the king and the sound of the Lord. I want you to go to Psalm chapter 40, verse number one. And when you get it, say amen. Just today I'm going to let you be seated in this because this is... I'm not really preaching a sermon. I want to deliver this, this word of the Lord. And Devin was all over it. And um, I thought she might just preach it, so I didn't have to. But she stopped just shy. So thank you, honey. Psalm 40, verse 1, when you have it, say amen. amen. I waited patiently for the Lord. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Go, go to verse 1. This is actually what I need you to see. Go to verse 1. How many see the words, I waited patiently for the Lord? How many see those words? Okay. How many believe that's the first words in that scripture? 
Okay, it's not. The first words in that scripture are, to the chief musician. How many have this in your Bible? Lift your hands so people near you don't think I'm making this up. To the chief musician, say to the chief musician. A Psalm of David. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Next verse. Next verse. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. Next verse. And put a new song in my mouth even praise to our God. Someone say praise to our God. Say praise. Say praise. Say praise. Say praise. Say he put a praise in my mouth. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. So for a few minutes, let me just unpack this and show you how I believe it relates to culture because one of the things I'm discovering about the enemy is his tactics are common among the righteous. And there are many people, and this is so crazy, but this past week I must have run into four or five people in our church family who said things like this. Well, I want to pray, but I felt intimidated. I wanted to worship, but I felt like people were looking at me. I wanted to open my mouth and shout, but I felt like that guy standing next to me was going to say something about me. And, and, and I'm listening to all this. I'm like, there's a devil loose. And it's this spirit of mocking. It is religion that sits on our shoulder telling us things like, people are going to look at you. Well, actually, they already are. People are going to say things about you. Actually, they're not. What they're waiting on is someone to have the courage to bless the Lord. Freedom comes in an atmosphere where the enemy has been exposed and his lies have been exposed and truth has been able to break chains and people experience a true freedom from spiritual darkness that has at times choke the life of God out of their soul. There are people in this place today who have a praise locked up on the inside of them that religion has shut the door on, turned the key, and expected you to keep that praise locked up on the inside of you for the rest of your life. Oh, pastor, I clap. That's wonderful. You clap. But there's some on the inside of you that will get heaven's attention. There is something locked up on the inside of you that wasn't permitted while you were sister, sitting near sister, got it going on, and brother flip-flop, and you felt out of place in, a, in an atmosphere where nobody was doing what you felt locked up. See, I don't think we have a praise problem. I think we have a freedom problem. I, I think we have a freedom problem in the church, and there are demon spirits that are, that are terrorizing the people of God, telling them, you don't have to praise the Lord. You don't need to lift your hands. People are going to talk about you. You're not worthy. You're not important enough at that church. You don't have a title. All that is garbage. He's worthy. Watch this. So David, this is a Psalm of David. The first 41 chapters are from David. There are other Psalms that come from David, but David is writing this Psalm and in chapter 40, he starts testifying. I'm not going to preach on this long. Uh, I, that's what I thought I was gonna do. I thought God took me this text to talk about him delivering us from the pit. How many remember what it was like being in a pit? It wasn't just any kind of pit. The Bible calls it a horrible pit. And what I found interesting is when I studied this text, the word horrible, it means a noisy, tumultuous sound. This was a tormenting pit accompanied by hopelessness and a sound of devastation. David was there. 
He knew what it was like, just like many of us know what those seasons in our life of a pit feel like. And I don't know how long David was in a pit, but he was there for a little while. Because the Bible said he waited. I woke straight up out of sleep this morning. I don't know what time it was. And the Lord spoke these words to me. Let me read it like he said it to me. Our society has made a living on removing anything that causes us to wait. Our society has made a living and a lot of money at finding shortcuts so we can remove the weight. I was out in Colorado this week and I thought, all these precious people who died on these wagon trails trying to find something to eat had to hunt their food. All we got to do now is run down to the Sonic, number one. And then we have the unmitigated goal to go crazy if it takes longer than four minutes. There's no art of waiting anymore in the earth. The earth wants a microwave thing and we've translated that into our religious. Our journey with God is not going to follow this microwavable culture that we're living in. And if we don't get this in our spirit, we will never become qualified to handle an anointing that shakes a generation because we think those things happen overnight. But I want to tell you, those kinds of harvests come through long seasons of seed sowing, crying, weeping, and praying, and waiting on God to fulfill the promise of his word. I waited patiently on the Lord. Can I go deeper? I waited patiently. Say that. I, say that. I waited patiently. What's interesting in this text is that the words waiting And patiently are the same Hebrew word. Don't miss if you're taking notes. Write this. I'm going somewhere. Just please trust me. I waited. Hebrew word. Kava. Patiently. Kava. What what I'm trying to tell you is we use the word patiently. But in the Hebrew, that's not what David said. In the Hebrew, what David said was, I waited and waited. I'm going back here to preach. I waited and waited. Woo, I feel him in me right now. I waited and waited. I waited on healing and I waited on healing. I waited on promises and I waited on promises. I waited on open doors and I waited on open doors. I waited on God to heal my marriage and I waited on God to heal my, I waited and I waited. This word, waited, is interesting because it has the idea of binding together like a rope. See this rope? Its strength is that it is bound and tied together with another string. Some of us have no strength in waiting because we're not bound to something that supplies strength while we're waiting. But today what I want you to get tied to is some promises. Because when you wait and you get bound to a promise, the wait isn't as bad when you're full of hope. That's why you can't give up because when you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait, but you're waiting while you're bound to a promise from God, that's how you can wait and wait and wait and never give up because you're tied to a promise, hallelujah, that came from the mouth of a God that doesn't know how to lie. If he ever said he's gonna heal you, I'm gonna bind myself to that promise and wait and wait and wait I feel the Holy Ghost on me right now. I'm going to wait and wait and wait.
and wait until he shows up and does what he said he was going to do. I waited and waited. Somewhere in that waiting, God, King James, the new King James says he inclined. That simply means he turned. Woo. Why did he turn? Because I was crying. How many mamas and daddies are in here today? Come on, lift your hand, don't lie. You ever had a kid that outweighed you? <laughs> you started with a strong no, you can't have that. Five minutes later, not right now. Three minutes later, hang on. Two minutes later, just get it and be quiet. You know what I'm talking about? Waiting, waiting, waiting. Last week, Isaiah wanted to go to the movies. So I said, go to the movies. He went to the movies. Yesterday, he came to me and said, did you ever transfer money in my account to pay for that movie I went to? I said, get a job. <laughs> Hallelujah. I transferred some money to his account. You know how many times he asked me before I did it? Seven. Number of completion. <laughs> I gave him the $20 just to get him to shut up. True story. And I read about a man like that in the Bible who was hungry for some food, went to his neighbor's house and after midnight, hey, I need some food. I got a guest coming. Can you hook me up? And the, the Bible says the man just stayed there, but he wanted to go back to bed. So he came to the door and said, take the bread and get out of my life. Hallelujah. I read a story about a woman who went to an unjust judge and pleaded and pleaded and pleaded and the Bible said that the unjust judge gave the woman what she wanted because he was tired of listening to her cry. If that unjust judge and that unrighteous man can answer somebody simply because they refuse to stop and they keep on waiting, I want to tell you that we serve a really good God. His anger is only for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. I'm gonna say that again. His anger is only for a split second, but his favor on your life is for a lifetime. I'm going somewhere. I'm just having a good time getting there. He cried unto the Lord and waited and waited. Until one moment the Lord turned, inclined, and heard his cry. Then he reached down and lifted him up out of a pit. A horrible pit that was noisy and a sinking place there was no stability in. He said, I'm going to take you out of that because you're about to die. That's how I feel sometimes. See, some of you, you weren't close enough to losing it all or to feeling hopeless. If you ever get close to that place of feeling like life is completely falling apart and he ever rescue you from that place, you'll never forget it. Hopeless in your sin. Hopeless in your condition. Hopeless about your future. If you've ever been there and he reached down and pulled you out, you'll write in your journal about it. You'll tell your girlfriends about it. You will never forget the faithfulness of God. 
I don't know about you, I don't need it to get any worse for me. I remember when I was laying in my bed in a fetal position, suicidal in my mind, depressed in my soul, hopeless on the inside, feeling like I had no future, 19 years old and wanting to die. I know when the Lord walked into my room and delivered me from the chains. I don't need anyone in here to persuade me to praise him. I know what the pit felt like. Watch, I'm going somewhere. He rescued me from the horrible pit and the miry clay. He put my feet upon a rock and established my goings. This is, this is crazy. He put a new song. Do you understand what the text is telling you? How many have... Who was I talking? Oh, I was talking to Chris, uh, Chris, I believe. No, it was Matt Hartley about their baby just now crossing into solid foods. How many remember Gerber? Was it Gerber or Gerber? Gerber, Gerber. It's the nastiest mess ever created. He said, this turkey and green bean combination I got sick thinking about it he said we have to literally open the baby's mouth and put the food in that's why my mom skipped Gerber and fed me mashed potatoes with butter and I'm doing all right for the glory of God today amen my mama saved me amen Watch, your mouth is an important instrument. In one verse, David used his mouth to cry. He heard my, say it. Where is the crying in the church? Oh, I have a quiet time. Your quiet time might be too quiet. We're the people who need God and we're not crying because he's deaf. We're crying because we're desperate. He's not deaf. We're desperate. He cried. That mouth was used for crying. But when God lifted him up out of the pit, he opened that mouth that was filled with a cry and God put a song in that mouth. That's what the word says. God put a song. Why you got to sing all the time? Because God put a song in our mouths. We're the people that God brought up out of a pit, answered their cry, brought them through a season of waiting and changed the tone of what was coming out of their mouth. No longer am I filled with despair and depression. No longer am I filled with hopelessness. But today I'm filled with a song of hope. Why? Because he put a new song in my mouth. Even praise to my God. So this is where it gets a little crazy and this is where I'm going. The word praise here is the word tehillah. I didn't even tell you where I was going with this and you started talking about Tehillah. Tehillah praise means the declaration of a new song. In fact, the root word of Tehillah is Hallel, which is where we get the word Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the word Hallelujah for all you praise police, it means to be clamorously foolish, to rave like a madman, to spin like a top. Ah, Brother Wallace, uh, we don't want to get in the flesh. Actually, praise is always something that comes out of the heart of a man or a woman. Now, I know what you mean when you say flesh. What you're saying is, 
Are you praising for the applaud of a man or are you praising for the applaud of the Father? Those who praise to attract the attention of a man need to go sit down until their heart is pure and mature and can come back to the altar and lift up holy hands not for man but for God. But please stop saying they're in the flesh when they're down here dancing and you don't feel like dancing because they made up their mind that although you don't feel like dancing, even when they don't feel like dancing, they've decided the king is worthy of a dance and that's what... Well, I've never been to a church like this, which is why we're having this talk. Because I don't know where you came from and I really don't even care. But it's time to put on a garment of praise for some of us. Because God said, I want this house to be a culture of freedom. I want it to be a house of celebration. Woo! I want it to be, I was reading over there in the Bible yesterday. Where's that at? It's in the book of Luke. It ain't even in my message, but I feel it right now, so I'm going to let it rip. It's over there in the Gospel of St. Luke. Jesus said he's talking to the sinners, the publicans, all those who are lost. And the Bible said that the religious people began to rebuke him. They began to rebuke him for hanging out with the lost and the undone and the blind. Jesus said, which of you have a sheep? When you lose one, don't leave the 90 and 9 to go get the one. And when they find the one, everybody goes crazy. I refuse to go to a church that can't get happy when a sinner comes down to the altar and gets saved. Well, we'll wait a while and see if it'll stick. Oh, shut up. You don't even know what you're talking about. I'm telling you, we need to celebrate grace every time it's demonstrated in this house. We need to thank God that drug addicts and prostitutes and homosexuals and they're coming in. I said it, they're coming in. And I want us to be a house of celebration. I want us to be a house that gives God glory over one. Culture, freedom. Some of you can't let your praise out because you're too busy judging your neighbors. Why don't you just remember the pit he drug you out of and get happy about that instead of scrutinizing? Well, I'm in a mood. He brought me up out of a pit. Now this, I'm, I'm getting to be done. He brought me up out of a pit, put a new song in my mouth, even praise, Tehillah, new song Amen. unto my God. Many will see it and turn to the Lord. Now this is crazy. What if your pain and your problem and the stuff that you waited and waited on What if it was talking to some people who are trying to find out what they believe about God and when they see him do what he's getting ready to do in your life, people are going to see it and they're going to say, my blessed Lord, if he did that for them, I'm going to follow this God they're serving. I, I could go on all day with that. I'm just going to stop right there because here's what I want you to see. This was not just scripture. This was a song. To the chief musician. Don't miss the fine print. To the chief musician. In other words, Psalm 40 was a song David wrote as he remembered the faithfulness of God. 
And he took Psalm 40 to the chief musician whose name was Asaph. Asaph was a skilled musician. Which is why in 1 Chronicles chapter 15, David in 1 Chronicles 15 appointed Asaph, this is verse 19. I like what's in the Bible. He appointed Asaph to play the cymbals. Can I play today? Just stay here because you're better than me and I need you in a minute. Now I'm going to preach from the drum cage. David didn't have a temple. David had a tent. He went and got the Ark of the Covenant and put a few poles with a covering of cloth over it. And there in that tent of David, tabernacle of David, the glory of the Lord manifested among Israel. During the reign of King David, there was joy and gladness in the land. Let me go back out here for a minute. Because David understood something. The presence of God was never intended to inhabit buildings made by the hand of man. The presence of God was intended to inhabit hearts that were hungry for the glory of God. That's why David had the glory. Solomon had the temple, but David had the glory because David was hungry for more of God. So the Bible says David appointed singers, psalmists, minstrels, musicians, their entire life and job responsibility was to host the glory of God. Well, Brother Wallace, I'm a Christian on Sunday. That's the problem. You're actually the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're a walking, living, breathing, moving move of God. I'm coming. So in 1 Chronicles 15, David appoints Asaph to play the cymbals. In chapter 16, he appoints others to play psalteries and harps. Look at verse 5. But Asaph made a sound with cymbals. What happens in the life of David is that David goes through hell on earth and the Lord reaches down and brings him out. He writes the story down and takes it to the tabernacle and hands it to the chief musician whose name is Asaph. And Asaph said to the band, boys, this is the song of the Lord. We're going to put music on this testimony.
He put a new song in my mouth. He put a new song in my mouth. He put a new song in my mouth. Many will hear it. Many will see it and be glad. Somebody think about what he's done for you and give it to the chief musician and let his music and your testimony come together. Come together. Lift it up. Come on, lift it up, lift it up. He put a new song in my mouth. Hey, He put a new song in my mouth. I was sinking deep in a pit, but the Lord brought me out. That's why he'd go on to say, oh, magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Somebody lift him up higher. Stay standing, I'm through. Come on, My enemies, I'm going to sing my own song for a minute, excuse me. Had me surrounded, Father, and I felt the breath of hell breathing down my neck. But you stepped in, God, right on time. And you delivered me from my enemies. And I've got to say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Somebody sing a song unto the Lord. Come on, open up your mouth and sing a song. You say, Pastor, I don't know how to sing. Hear the song being sung. Put your words on the music and sing a new song. Hallelujah. Come on, let's go higher. Let's go higher. Come on, musicians. Come on, worshipers. And we give you the glory this. Come on. We're shifting the atmosphere. We crown you with praise, Lord. We crown you with glory, Father. There's nobody like you, God. There's no one beside you, Lord. Hallelujah! I waited patiently I waited and waited and waited and waited womb was empty and the doctors told me I'm singing the woman's song right here they said you'll never have a baby so I waited and waited and waited and waited and waited and waited but one day I went and got me a test from the Dollar General and I came out of the bathroom and all of a sudden my waiting was over my waiting was over God opened up my womb and he gave me a child of promise I waited 
I waited and waited it at a bow shot. Bankruptcy. Chapter 13, chapter 11, chapter 8, 9, 10. They told me I'd never be able to have a house. But I waited and waited. I waited and waited. And just recently, Pastor, the bank gave us a loan. And we're buying a house. The Lord heard my cry. And he answered my prayer. That's a new song. Come on and give God glory. I waited and waited for my kids to come back to the Lord. Demons were telling me they were too far gone. <laughs> Lost in sin. No hope for their future. But I waited and waited. <laughs> who, who am I talking about in here right now? I waited and waited. They got hooked on more drugs, but I waited and waited. They got thrown in prison one more time, but I waited. I waited. I trusted in the promise of his word. I waited and waited. And the Lord heard my cry. I feel breakthrough. Somebody's child is coming home. If you got a child that you need to come home, lift up and pray. I waited. Why are you preaching this today, Pastor? Because the culture's got to shift. When you come in to this house, you come in declaring his goodness. When LeBron, who I would call the chief musician of the house, begins to open service with this melody of heaven. What you gotta do is go get your experience with God over the last few days, last few weeks, last few months. And even though your flesh doesn't feel it, your spirit says God is here. And you lift up your voice. And you begin to shift your atmosphere with praise. Somebody lift your voice as you lift him higher. Break through in the atmosphere, God. Break through in the atmosphere. So he took it, where did my notes go? He took it to the chief musician and they put music on the testimony. Here's what I like and I'm through with this. First Chronicles 25, the sons of Asaph, Zakur and Joseph, Nethaniah and Asarela, the sons of Asaph, under the hands. Listen to me, leaders, musicians. Under the, the sons of Asaph, under the hands of Asaph. Pastor, that sounds like control. No, it's called mentoring. Amen. Yes. There's a reason why I'm teaching and singing while I'm preaching today. Because I'm trying to teach you how to shift the atmosphere and set the culture of this house. When the Bible says in Psalm 122 that God inhabits the praises of his people. Do you know what the word praises is in the Hebrew? Tehillah. Amen. What does that mean? God sits on the songs that you sing. Which is why if I were the devil, I'd keep you from singing. Because anytime you start singing, God starts sitting. Oh God, I'm getting ready to preach my head off in here. 
Well, Pastor, I want God to sit on my life. Then somebody sing him a song. I loose you from the fear of man right now. And I declare this house will be a house where the song of the Lord, the song of the Lord will rise and the glory of the Lord will fall. Somebody lift up a shout. Come on. Yes! The song of the Lord will rise and the glory of the Lord will fall. The song of the Lord will rise and the glory of the Lord will fall. I'm done with this. Get your tithe and offering in your hands. Come on. Get your tithe and your offering in your hands right now. And these were the hand, what, what, wait a minute. The sons of Asaph under the hands of Asaph, which, this is First Chronicles 25 verse 2, which prophesied and worshiped under the order of the king. Asaph never said, David, King David, I don't like this tune. He simply said, King, what do you want to hear? That's the sound we want to produce is the sound the king. So let me talk for two minutes about sound because Churches are now being categorized into the sound. That's a southern gospel sound. That's a black gospel sound. That's a hip hop sound. That's a Bethel sound. I'm tired of all that noise. I want to know what kind of sound does the king he brought me out of the fire not so I could show him what I want to sound like but so I could say you brought me out how do you want me to sound that's the kind of sound I want to produce so some of us in here Put up with sounds in this house just because you like prayer at the beginning or preaching or some of us like the worship but they don't like the sound of the pre. Listen, I just want to find out what the king wants in this house and make him happy. And if that's the kind of place you want to be, then come on and be part of the family. But I'm not going to waste time having a worship war. Well, if you'd sing a few more old songs, I'd come more often. I really don't care. I like singing old songs, new songs, brand new songs, never been written before songs. I just want the king to be pleased with the sound. Lord, we repent of creating our own sounds. Sounds that make us happy when we are called to create a sound for the pleasure of the king. And today, God, let us sing that new song that you put in our mouth. Come on, one more time before we give. Lift your hands all over this house right now. Present your life as an instrument for God. Have my voice. You can have my vocal cords. You can have my heart. You can have my body. You can have my song. You can have my worship. You can have my praise. Lord, I'm here for you. I'm not here for me, Lord. I'm not here for me, God. I didn't come so I could find pleasure in my coming. I came to bring you honor and glory and to worship your great name today, Lord. Hallelujah. I declare this culture will be a house of new songs, a, a sound that comes from redeemed people. I'm not just talking about songs that we've never heard before. Some people, a new song is a song we put on the screen you never knew we sang. You start singing it and it becomes the testimony of your life. As it becomes the song of the Lord, the glory of God begins to fill your heart and your life. That's what I'm talking about today. And anyone in this place 
who has something locked up on the inside of them. And you are worried about people and how they will respond to you releasing your praise. I loose you from the fear of man right now in the name of Jesus. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Oh, glory. Oh, by my All over this house. May it be a culture of freedom, Father. I keep hearing the Lord say, freedom belongs to us. We must walk in freedom. He's not going to open your mouth and make you sing. He's not going to open your mouth and make you shout. He's going to give you the freedom to do it, and the choice is yours. Look at your neighbor tell him the choice is yours. Tell him, you tell that neighbor who shot that at you, you, you go right back to him and tell him, I choose to bless the Lord. I choose to. In fact, you better be warned next Sunday if you sit by me, I'm not coming in with that same old 30-minute late praise. I'm coming in with my mouth open and my hands up. In fact, I'm coming in telling everybody around me it was the Lord that did it. Up, oh, up. Oh. It was the Lord! I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied every groan. Long as I High, but I'm gonna try. As troubles rise, I'll hasten to, 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 to your throne. How many know he heard you? How many are thankful he heard you? Get your tithe and your offering in your hand. Let's give it today in Thanksgiving. Come on. Father, we thank you that you've invited us to participate in the kingdom of God. And we thank you today, God. You brought us up out of the pit. You put a new song in our mouth. You put our feet on a solid rock and declared, we have a future. Today, God, we give. We love you. We give because we have a future. We give because the best is still yet to come. Today, God, I bless every family that's faithful in their giving. And I ask in the name of Jesus today that your glory would just be a surrounding wall around their family this week. Protect them and watch over them, God. Keep them safe from sudden danger and calamity, Lord. I pray for divine appointment on every one of their lives today. That this coming week you'll let them be in the right place at the right time. If you receive it, say amen. Lord, bless them today financially, mentally, socially, domestically, physically, spiritually, in every capacity of their life. Bless them today, God, I pray. May this house be a house of sounds that please the King. If you're going to dedicate the rest of your life to releasing sounds that honor the King, lift your hands right now. Lift your hands. I release the anointing on you now. You are now anointed to release sounds that honor and attract the King of glory. Woo! You're going to begin to sing. I don't even care if it's off key. You're going to begin to sing and attract the King of glory. In Jesus' name. Just come and worship him in your giving today. Come and worship him in your giving today. Hallelujah. 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 We thank
thank you, Lord. Give me one more minute. I'm going to bless you. After you give, I'm going to bless you. We're going to go. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How many first-time guests are here? If you're a first-time guest, would you lift your hand? Come on, RTTN, help me welcome all of our... I see you, big brother. God bless you. God bless you, big brother. Bless your family. Bless your family. Come on, RTTN, help me welcome our first service guest. Listen, Pastor Devin is coming. She's got some quick announcements. We're going to go out in the lobby that it's next to the main parking lot. We're going to shake hands. I'd love to see all of the family, but especially our first-time guests today. Devin's got a couple of announcements, really quick, very important stuff, and then we're going to release you to go because we've got second service getting ready to come in, but I want her to release these. How many glad you came to church today? Give God praise one more time all over the room. Come on. If you're interested in Redemption School of Ministry tomorrow night in our RSM building on the second floor at 645, Kevin and I will be there to have an information meeting. So if you're an adult, if you're just graduating high school of any age, if you're interested in the School of Ministry, be here tomorrow night at 645. Next Sunday is a huge Sunday. If you have never been baptized and you want to express uh, your step of faith to become a Christian in baptism, next Sunday we'll have baptism in the second service, 1145. So please email the church at baptism at rttnchurch.com if you want to be baptized. This Wednesday is the deadline for signups. Also, um, our school... Our kids' school of ministry here in September, we're taking 40 students to Washington, D.C. Um, to march on Washington and pray and pray over every place there. We're even getting in the White House. So I covet your prayers for our upper school students, but we're also trying to raise funds to get there. So next Sunday, immediately following both services, nobody has to cook because we are having a spaghetti dinner. So all of our students are selling tickets. It's only $5 for a full lunch. It'll be in the cafeteria after each service. So we're asking all of our church family to please show up, buy a ticket, and eat spaghetti um, after both services to help us get to Washington. So God bless you. Rick is gonna come close us in prayer. I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word today. We ask God that you would seal it in our hearts. Let us never, ever, ever be the same again. We ask this in your precious name. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.